Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. We just cut Tempo 2.6. I am Joe Elliott. And I'm Jenny. And we're gonna show you all the new TraceQL features right now. Uh, as always, as always, we will start with an empty query. Empty queries are great for uh, simply finding anything. And I like empty query, it's a good place to start. But we're gonna start showing you, of course, events. We'll start there, then uh, links and arrays. Uh, events have an intrinsic uh, called name, which allows us to find uh, an event by, uh, well, name. Uh, Jenny, what would you say the difference between an attribute and an intrinsic is? Well, an intrinsic are just things that are always there, while attributes are custom um, key value pairs. Absolutely. So on events, there is a intrinsic, and you can tell it's an intrinsic because we have this colon here. So event uh, colon is telling us intrinsic name. All attributes will have a name. So a clever little query to just start finding any event would be event name uh, not equal to empty. And you can see my data set here. This is a synthetic data set, but we'll have some fun with it. Has this event uh, name mutex acquire, which, as one might expect, would be when a mutex is acquired. Um, and we can see here we've done our query. Uh, we can uh, we have our filter, and we're finding very quickly a uh, an event with the name mutex acquire. What uh, any other attributes, or maybe let's let's say any other intrinsics, Jenny, on the events? Well, we've also added support for um, time since start, which is a um, the time that the event start in relation to the span start time. A fantastic intrinsic, uh, absolutely. So, uh, if we were to, for instance, to want to find some mutex that perhaps took a moment to acquire versus a mutex that was acquired very quickly, uh, perhaps a query like this would help. So here I'm saying I'm looking using my event name. Uh, I guess I've still left it as not equal to empty. And I've said, how long after the beginning of that span did it take for this event to occur? And now I'm looking for finding spans that only uh, have this event after a few seconds. So I can see here, this took 2.87 seconds. I can kind of jump around to some of these other options here. And maybe now I'm finding traces that took a moment due to a mutex issue. Cool. So events, they have intrinsics and colon is going to always specify intrinsics. They have attributes. Um, which are custom key value pairs, as Jenny said, and they, um, yeah, and that's it. And they're great ways to mark specific times inside of a span. Uh, what's next, Jenny? Are we doing links or are we doing arrays? Why don't we talk about links? Links, absolutely. Uh, so links like, um, links like events have both intrinsics and uh, these custom key value pairs attributes. And we will use an intrinsic to find uh, any link, essentially. So we're going to use the trace ID intrinsic. Um, and I'm going to look for links where the trace ID is not empty. Uh, we can jump here, for instance, uh, and we're going to be able to find any link. So trace ID, uh, like, uh, like the name on an event, is intrinsic. Every single link has this. It's a very simple way to just go find any link, essentially. Uh, attributes also. So it, I do actually have some link attributes, Jenny. Uh, we're going to use these next. How can we specify uh, an attribute versus a, a intrinsic here? Right, for intrinsics we use the colon and for attributes we are using the dot um, syntax. So for searching for links um, attribute, we'll do link dot the key of the attribute. Cool. So let's use this job one. So I, I have this job here. This is a purchase on the cart service. This job is maybe uh, they've successfully gone through the purchase, the API returns, but we're queuing up a, a way to email a receipt. Uh, and instead of directly uh, creating those spans inside of this, we're gonna link to a new trace. So let's say I'm interested in debugging some issue with my receipts. I can now find any link. Oops, I've spelled this terribly. Uh, any link uh, with this particular custom attribute. So um, with links, we have those spans, or sorry, we have those attributes, and we have those uh, intrinsics, and we can select all of that uh, with TraceQL. Uh, like Jenny said, dots for attributes, uh, colons for intrinsics. Final new feature, what are we looking at? Arrays. Absolutely. Arrays, uh, I think arrays are most common in the headers. Have you seen arrays anywhere else, uh, Jenny? Um, 
Not that I'm aware of. It's mostly in the header, the HTTP header. So a lot of the open telemetry clients will uh, encode HTTP headers as arrays, even if there's only one value. And for a long time in Tempo, this was actually impossible to query. Uh, and in Tempo 2.6 with vparquet4 as the defaults, uh, we can now do that. Not only can we query it, but we can uh, have it working IntelliSense. So uh, let me grab one of these. Oops, uh, application JSON. I kind of did a bad query there. So now this is actually an array. HTTP request header accept. Previously, this would have been impossible to query in Tempo. Um, but now you can see our, our rendered array over here. Uh, if this string appears anywhere in the array, if the array had five or 10 or 30 items and the string was anywhere in it, we would successfully uh, find the spam. So we have more explicit array support in the future, but right now with Tempo 2.6 and vpark 4 just immediately it's going to work. Um, you can just use your standard equals operators, greater than, less than, all that's gonna work uh, very seamlessly with arrays. Uh, thank you for joining us. A uh, bunch of awesome new features in 2.6. I am super excited to have Jenny here. She wrote all of these new features. Um, I have had very little hand in this recently, and I am uh, very excited that we have other developers making awesome TraceQL features. So events, we talked about uh, links, uh, uh, links, events, and arrays, and also went a bit into the new TraceQL syntax with regard to intrinsics with the colon and attributes with the dot. So uh, get excited about TraceQL, or sorry, Tempo 2.6 with the new TraceQL features, and we look forward to seeing you in 2.7.